I would like to know uh, what do you think about hard forks for a way as a way to evolve protocols in blockchains. Uh, what do we think of hard forks as a way to evolve protocols? So um, I'm a big fan of automotive crash tests, right? I'm a big fan. I think one of the reasons we have safe automobiles is because of automotive crash tests. I'm also a big fan of using dummies in the automotive crash tests, where I'm not the passenger. Right? Now, if someone said, we have a new bus, everybody get on, we don't know how it works, but we're going to run a crash test to find out. <laughs> Jump on. <laughs> That's how I feel about hard forks. I would rather not be in the crash test <laughs> when the crash test is happening. Um, hard forks are dangerous. They're difficult, they're complex, and they have unintended behaviors. Hard forks bring together the nexus of politics, community response, independent economic agents, self-interest, monetary policy, and technology. And any one of those can go wrong. Uh, in a recent example, we saw in Ethereum a hard fork, and the hard fork technologically was perfect. Perfect. Economically, politically, in terms of the community and self-interested actors, uh, not so perfect. 10% of the economic activity community hash rate ended up forking off to a separate coin, and now there's two systems with competing interests and competing designs. I would rather not see that in Bitcoin. Um, so I'm a bit skeptical of this being used as the mechanism to rapidly iterate and mature the protocol. But that's one of the design trade-offs that's different about Ethereum. So Ethereum is its design trade-off is because of its model, it needs to iterate a lot more to reach the same level of security maturity as Bitcoin. Because it has a larger attack surface, a larger exposure surface. And so it's going to go through a lot more hard forks. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It depends what you're trying to use it for. Um, I don't think it makes for very good sound money um, and for a robust platform. But uh, that's a trade-off that allows it to actually have much more flexible application development. And so I'm interested in that. I think that's the choice I would make for Ethereum. It's not the choice I would make for Bitcoin. Does that help? Bit of an esoteric topic.